try and solve this complex trig equation before I do. So first thing that I'm going to do in my solution is I'm going to write sine of z in exponential form. So sine of z is equal to e to the power of iz minus e to the power of negative iz all over 2i. And now, of course, that's still going to be equal to 2. So now I'll take this 2i across and I'll be left with e to the iz minus 1 over e to the iz. And I can do 1 over is because e to the negative iz has a negative in the exponent, so I can take it to the denominator. Now I'll multiply 2 by 2i and I get 4i. All right. Now I'm going to let e to the iz equal to w. Okay, so I have w minus 1 over w equal to 4i. And I'll multiply through by w, and I'll get w squared minus w over w, which is 1, is equal to 4wi. Now just rearranging all of this, I get minus 4wi minus 1 is equal to 0. Now we have a standard quadratic equation, and we need to solve this using the quadratic formula. So w is equal to negative b, which is going to be minus 4i, because our w is the variable that we're solving for. So the coefficient of w is negative 4i, and that's plus minus the square root of b squared, which is negative 4i squared, minus 4ac. So a is the coefficient of w squared, which is 1, and so 4 times by 1 is still 4. And then c is negative 1. So that's multiplied by negative 1. Now negative 4 times negative 1, that's positive 4. Okay. And that's all over 2a. So a is just 1. So 2 times by 1 is obviously 2. Now distributing this negative here, we can simplify this to be positive 4i. And then negative 4i squared is negative 4 squared, which is 16, times by i squared, which is negative 1. So 16 times by negative 1 is negative 16. So negative 16 plus 4, negative 12. Okay, now 12, within this root, within as a third, we can write it like this. Negative 12 square rooted is equal to negative 1 square rooted times by the square root of 4 times by the square root of 3. Okay, now negative 1 square rooted is i times by 4 square rooted is 2 times by the root of 3. Okay, so... That we can all, we can erase it and replace it with 2 root 3i. Okay, now we can have w, and now we divide each of these terms in the numerator by 2. So we get 2i plus or minus the root of 3i. Now we can take out i as a common factor. So we have 2 plus or minus the root of 3i. All right, but now we initially said that w was equal to e to the iz. Okay, so we have e to the iz is equal to 2 plus the root of 3i, or e to the iz is equal to 2 minus the root of 3i. Now, solving each of these will give us two different answers. So I'm going to do each one of them in a different color. So this will be our first one, and this will be our second equation that we're going to solve. So let's solve equation one now. All right. So the first step is to write both of them in the modulus argument exponential form. So we know that z as a complex number can have a real part and, and an imaginary part. So we can let z equal to x plus i y, obviously x being the real part and y being the imaginary part. So rewriting this, we have e to the power of i z, and now i can be multiplied by x plus i y. So i times by x is obviously just i x, and i times by i y is i squared y. And i squared is negative 1. So we have minus y is equal to this. Now we need to write 2 plus the root of 3 i as an imaginary number. We need to write it in its exponential form. So we look at our, our complex plane with our imaginary axis and our real axis. So there's no real part to this specific complex number. So it's we're going to have nothing... So we're going to lie on the imaginary axis. Now 2 plus the root of 3 is going to be above the real axis, so we'll have an imaginary number somewhere over there. Okay, so the modulus is the distance that this complex number lies from the origin. And obviously that distance is just 2 plus root of 3. 
So we have 2 plus the root of 3, and then times by e to the argument. And the argument is the angle between the positive real axis and our complex number. So that's that angle there, which is 90 degrees. And 90 degrees in radian measure is pi by 2. So we can say pi by 2 plus 2 pi k i. And the reason why we are adding 2 pi k, so that's 360 degrees multiplied by k being an integer, is because if we do that, we'll come full revolution back to the same point. Okay. So now what we have to do is we split this into e to the i x times by e to the negative y. And that's, of course, still equal to 2 plus the root of 3 times by e to the power of pi by 2 plus 2 pi k i. All right, let's move this out the way to make some space. Okay, so now we need to equate real parts and imaginary parts. So we can see that that's a real, and that's real as well. So we can have e to the i y is equal to 2 plus the root of 3. Now solving that, sorry, that's not i y, that's negative y. So now solving that, we have negative y is equal to the natural log of 2 plus the root of 3. And then we take the negative across, and y is equal to the negative of the natural log of 2 plus the root of 3. Okay, so we have solved now for y. Now we need to solve for x by equating the imaginary parts. So we have e to the i x is equal to e to the power of pi by 2 plus 2 pi k i. Now it's clear from this that x is equal to pi by 2 plus 2 pi k. All right. So we initially said that z can be written in terms of x and y. So if we now write our first solution of z, it's going to be equal to pi by 2 plus 2 pi k, and then that's minus i y, so that's minus negative times by the natural log of 2 plus the root of 3. So that's one of our solutions. So now we'll switch over to blue, and we'll solve this complex equation. Okay, so I'll write it over here. e to the negative iz, or no, e to the iz, is equal to 2 minus the root of 3. I. All right. Now, once again, we got to express both sides in exponential form. And once again, our z is equal to x plus i y. Okay. So, similarly to how we expressed e to the power of z as e to the negative x minus y, we'll do that same thing again. So, that's i x minus y. And then we need to write this complex number in exponential form. So, we look at our argand diagram. And now there's no real part to it. And 2 as a number is greater than the root of 3. The reason why I know that is because 2 is equal to the root of 4. So obviously the root of 4 is greater than the root of 3. So this lies above the real axis. But it lies on the imaginary line because there is no real part to it. So it lies somewhere over there. All right. So our modulus now is the distance that our imaginary number lies from the origin. So it's that distance there. Now that distance is simply 2 minus the root of 3. Okay, now our argument is what we're going to put into the exponent of e. So our argument is the angle between our complex number and the positive real axis. So once again, it's going to be 90 degrees, which is pi by 2. So we have pi by 2 plus 2 pi k. And once again, adding 2 pi k because 2 pi k or 2 pi is 360 degrees, and that's a revolution, so we can add revolutions, and we'll come back to the same point. All right, so now I can split this up, e to the ix minus y, into e to the ix times by e to the negative y. And now, similarly to how we have done before for the yellow solution, we are going to equate the real parts and the imaginary parts. So we have e to the negative y equal to 2 minus the root of 3. Okay. So y must then equal to, or negative y must then equal to, the natural log of 2 minus the root of 3. And we take the negative across, and we have y is equal to negative la the natural log of 2 minus the root of 3. Okay. So now we're going to solve for the imaginary parts. So equating imaginary parts on both sides, we have e to the i x being equal to e to the pi by 2 plus 2 pi k i. Once again, it's clear to see that x is then equal to 
pi by 2, let's write that a bit neater, pi by 2 plus 2 pi k. And throughout the, the entire solution, k is an element of integers. And the reason why it's an element of integers is because if we are adding 2 pi to our solution, to the arguments, then we are adding 360 degrees. And we want to add any in increments of 360 degrees because it brings us back to the same point. So we, if we add 360 degrees or 720 degrees, we still end up at the same point. And obviously 360 degrees would be for k being 1 and 720 degrees will be for k being 2. And I hope that makes sense. So now all that's left to do is to write our second solution of z, which is equal to, now remember we said z is equal to x plus i, y. So our x is pi by 2 plus 2 pi k. And then our y, we have minus i times by the natural log of 2 minus the root of 3. So those are our two solutions for z. This solution and this solution. So I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you managed to solve for z. And if you did, please leave it a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.